All right, today we're going to go over the basics of getting set up with Steam VR. Show you how to set up a VR scene and then maybe drop in a weapon and start shooting at some stuff. So to get started, we just have an empty project and we're going to begin by importing the Steam VR asset pack. So just grab it off the asset store right here. Hit import, give it just a second. And then we're going to see this pop up that just has some recommended settings for Steam VR. Just go ahead and hit accept all. Uh, next, we're going to grab an environment. You can use the one that I'm going to download or just grab anything that you like. Um, for this sample, I'm going to do there was a free morgue right here. And just download this PBR morgue off the asset store for free. And we'll just click, I made a backup, go ahead. This one has a couple scripts in it. Doesn't matter for this though. All right, we also need a gun, so we have something to shoot with. So we're gonna just search for a shotgun. And let's grab this free shotgun right here. Just import this thing in. We also need a gunshot sound effect so I'm just gonna search for gun sound and we'll grab this first pack right here and import them all the last thing we're gonna need is a muzzle shot particle effect just for when we shoot our gun so there's a nice big flash I've got one that'll be shared below in the links importing it now cool now we're all set up and ready to start building our little shooter scene. So I'm gonna just use the default scene that comes with this morgue asset pack. Open this thing up and take a quick look at it. All right, just a nice little morgue room. This will work perfect for what we need. Um, we've got the room here. What we want to do is look into the Steam VR folder, and in there you'll see a prefabs folder. There's a camera rig and some other stuff. What we care about right now is the camera rig. So I'm going to drop this out onto our scene. It's not where I want it to go. Let's see. I'm going to drop it right over here. Okay, that's a little bit high. I'm going to move it down so that it's on the ground in a decent area where there's a little bit of space we're not right in a wall um, the other thing i want to do is delete this fps controller we don't want to use the default one that's for 2d games so drop that right out and i'm going to save our scene now if i press play you see that we can already look around here let me drag the cam game view over here so you can see i can look around Check out the room a little bit. You can see my controllers tracking for me already. We haven't done much other than just drag out this camera rig. Uh, the next thing we want to do is expand out the camera rig and take a quick look at it. It's got two controllers, a left and a right, and then there's an, another child for the head. Um, for this one, we're just going to use the right controller. But what I want to do is add a new component to it. I'm going to add a tracked controller. So there's a Steam VR track controller. Um, this is going to give us a couple of events, and you can kind of see them here. So if I press play and pull up my controller, now when I pull the trigger, you see that the trigger press checkbox is getting set to true. Uh, I can also do the trackpad, touched, clicked, uh, the grips, and then the two menu buttons. Oh, well, this one didn't work, but this top menu button shows up just fine. Uh, we need to leave that on there. We're going to use that so that we can detect the trigger pull for gunshots. Alright, cool. So now that we have our controller with the track controller object on it, I want to drag out our shotgun. We want to hook the shotgun up so that it tracks with the hand. So I'm going to go to the shotgun folder and this is the shotgun model. I'm just going to drop it onto controller right. And look at that. It's giant. Um, not a problem though, we just need to go into the asset import settings. So I'll select the mesh down here and I'll change the scale factor to 0 0.1. Hit apply and there we go. It's just about the right size. Alright, now that we have the gun in, I'm going to press play again and 
Let's see what that looks like while it's tracked to the controller. Get this game view back over here. Oh, so you can see the controller is not quite aligned with our gun. Um, it's not a problem though. All we have to do is go in and select the, con the gun. Oh, it's already selected. And then we're going to need to rotate it. So let's get over the scene view. I'm going to get it selected. Let me set that down for a second. And I'll go to the rotate tool. I'm going to rotate it over here. Um, it looks like it's going to be about 90 on the Y. And then we'll rotate it along the Z axis so that it looks kind of even with the top. We kind of want to line it up with the, the top of the controller here. And then I'm going to drag it down a little bit. It's just kind of in place so the trigger's kind of close to where where it is on the actual controller. And they're not exact, but they're pretty pretty close lined up. So now that I've got it in position, I want to right click on the transform and copy component. As soon as I stop playing, this thing's going to get reset. You can see it right now. There we go. It got reset. But since we copied it, we can just paste the values back in. Press play again. And there we go. It's nice and lined up. Um, once we have it lined up, we can actually go in and select the model that's under the controller and just uncheck it. So now when we press play a third time, you see it just looks like I'm holding a gun and it's aimed and lined up the right way. Uh, there's another problem with this gun though. It's using some old shaders instead of the new standard shaders. So I'm just going to select it, go down to the actual mesh here. And we'll just change the shader over to standard, expand it out, and then it's a gun, so it's going to be a little bit metallic, maybe around 0.6, and the smoothness around 0.2-ish. Cool. Now that we have that set up, we will go in and add a script. So I'm going to select the root of the gun here, and I'm just going to add a new component. We're going to name it... Oh, weapon. I already have it typed out. So just to type weapon, create a new C-sharp script, and then we'll open it up in Visual Studio. And here it is in Visual Studio, just a nice empty model behavior. I hit my clear formatting keys, kind of reset that. Um, let's see, the first thing we want to do is cache our tracked controller. To do that, we'll just do controller equals oh, sorry. equals get component in parent steam VR tracked controller and then I just go over it and I just hit control period and enter to generate the field so this is going to be a reference to that tracked controller that we have as a parent so here we're on the weapon and one level up on the parent we have the steam VR tracked controller we're going to use that to track uh, the trigger pulse. Um, another thing we're going to need is an audio source. So I'm just going to add another cached audio source here. So do audio source equals get component audio source. Ah. And control period again. And there we go. And we can cache our audio source. Um, we don't have an audio source yet, so I'm gonna just add that on. So with the weapon selected, just add an audio source. And this is gonna be for our gunshot. Now we actually have the audio from the asset pack that we downloaded, so let's go into here and I'll take kick gun action one. See how that sounds. We'll, we'll see it in a minute. Let's see, let's go back over to our code one more time. We've got lots of stuff open. Um, let's see, what do we need now? We need, oh, let's register for the controller's trigger event. So to do that, we're gonna do controller dot trigger clicked, just like that, plus equals, and then I just hit tab tab to auto generate it. But we're gonna rename this method to mm, fire weapon. That's what it's going to do when they trick when they click the trigger we'll fire the weapon uh, see to fire our weapon in this case we're going to play the audio source so we'll do audio so, ah, let's see audio source dot 
play. Um, and then we want to spawn a muzzle flash, so that's going to give us a little flash particle right at the tip of the gun. To do that, we're going to, well, we need a muzzle flash prefab reference. So first thing I'll do is set that up. I'll do a serialized field right here, and we'll do private game object uh, muzzle flash prefab. This is just going to be a reference to prefab for the muzzle flash that is in the pack that, I, like I said, is in the link below. So to set to spawn this thing, we're going to do var muzzle flash equals instantiate muzzle flash prefab, and then ah, we need a place to put it. So we could just put it right at the center of the gun which would be the weapons transform position but we really we want it on the tip so we're going to add another serialized field and this is going to be private transform call it muzzle point and we'll, we'll create this in just a moment but for now we'll take the muzzle point and we're going to use that as the position so we'll do muzzle point dot position and for the rotation, we're using this one right here. We'll do muzzle point dot rotation. And then the last thing I want to do is just destroy the muzzle flash after half a second or so. So we'll destroy muzzle flash dot game object. If we just destroy the muzzle flash, it'll remove the script and the game object will stay there. This is not what we want. We want to destroy the game object. Uh, but we want to do it delayed. So we'll do it after. 0.5 seconds. So after half a second, we'll destroy the muzzle flash. It's just a nice little overload on the destroy method. I'm also going to get rid of these two unnecessary using statements and delete out the update method since we're not using it. And I'll even mark the start method private. Doesn't really matter, just syntactic preference. Um, I think we're done with the code, so jump back over to the editor. We'll go back over to our gun, and let's see, once this thing recompiles, we should see our fields pop up. Cool. So we have a muzzle flash prefab and a muzzle point that we need to assign. The muzzle flash prefab is right here in the prefabs folder. No? Where is it? Did I import it? That's a good question. Let's search in here. I did. Where is this? Oh, it is in part. It's in particles. That makes sense, it's a particle. So I'm gonna drag the muzzle flash, ah, muzzle flash prefab over to the muzzle flash prefab spot. And then we need a muzzle point. So like I said, we're, we just wanna transform this kind of at the end of the gun. So if I go down to the gun, and below the ground right now, that's fine though. Um, what I'll do is right click on this model and do 3D object and it'll just create a cube, which is way too big. Not a problem though, we'll just rescale it to 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. And then I'm gonna drag it down, kind of line it up with the, the muzzle of the gun. There we go, that's about right. But right now it's facing out to the right of the gun. Um, that would make the muzzle flash point out that way too, since we're using its forward direction. So I'm gonna rotate it, kind of drag it, Right about there, Get, we want the blue line facing forward. It looks like that's gonna just be negative 90. Oh, whoops, I did it on scale. Let's put that back to 0 0.02. Do this at negative 90. And then I'm gonna just uncheck the box collider and the renderer, we don't need those there. We can actually remove them if we want. Uh, and then I'll add a little icon here. So click the little red spot, and then when I zoom out, you can see, oh, it says cube. All right, let's rename it muzzle point. Just a nice little thing you can add to see different transforms that aren't really visible. And they made them a lot bigger in 2017. Still not sure if I like that, but it's good enough for now. So let's go back to the weapon, and we just need to assign the muzzle point. All right, all done. Press, ah, we'll hit save. Press play. And take a look at our gun. Oh, you may have heard that. First shot, just fire off. It's because we have play on awake check. So I grab out my headset and drag over the game view here. 
make this nice and big. We establish the tracking. Cool. So now, got the gun in my hand. I should be able to aim and shoot. Muzzle flashes. I've got sound effects. And unlimited ammo, of course. We haven't set up anything for ammo. Uh, right now our gun doesn't actually shoot anything, but it sounds like it's shooting, looks like it's shooting, and it's a good first step. Cool, so that's all I'm going to show today. Later on, uh, I'll do another video to show how to take that gun and then actually shoot an object, maybe blow something up, add some bullet holes to the world, or do other kinds of exciting things. And if you're interested in doing VR development in Unity, of course, um, feel free to check out my site. I've got lots of blog posts and articles about VR development and just general Unity stuff, as well as a full-fledged VR course. Welcome to check out. All right, thanks a lot.